Hello, Paul Wilson here from PR Wilson Media. A warm welcome to this, the fifth and final lesson in the Facebook Basics training course, which is all about adding and interacting with friends. We'll walk you through how to add friends and manage the updates you see from friends on your network. This is very important. As soon as you're in contact with friends, by default, you'll receive email notifications for many of their activities. Now, if they're a prolific user of Facebook, it's often difficult because you may find yourself bombarded with messages in your email inbox. But in the next few minutes, I'll explain how you can avoid this situation. Let's start by logging on once again with the user created in the first lesson. Immediately you see the option search your email for friends already on Facebook. Tempting to do that. But if you find friends in this way, the way it will work is go through your directory of email contacts and send out emails to those people. And that's not necessarily the best way to get connected. Especially as you're only really looking to add a few close friends to connect with initially. So better if you know the name of the person you want to connect with and you should be able to simply type it in the box above. Now it depends on how common the name is. If I type in Paul Wilson, you can see there's several entries. So you may need to know something else about them. Uh, so I know I'm in Rotary, for example, so we do that search. Didn't work. I know that I used to work for Unisys. Let's try that. Ah, we found him. That's me. So we'll click on there. It may well be that your friend will send you a friend request as soon as you join. You could ask them to do that. Anyway, here we are. So we click on the link there. And you can see there are three buttons. Add friend, subscribe and message. Now whether or not you see these buttons depends on how the person you are connecting with has configured their privacy settings. They may have specified only to let friends of friends send you a friend request or send a message, in which case you may not see either the friend, add friend or message button. They may not even have enabled the option to, subs to allow subscribers to public updates. But in this example, so that you can get started, we've set it all up so you can just click add friend. But let's use best practice wherever possible. I would suggest sending a message first to let people know that you're going to send a friend request. A personal message to tell them who it is makes it far easier to recognize. The reason I say that is that if it's unrecognized by the person, they may click ignore to the friend request. They may then be prompted, do you actually know this person outside of Facebook? Sometimes they'll click no. And if you, as the person making the request, gets enough of these ignores, you, in extreme cases, you could find your account actually being temporarily suspended by Facebook. Now, it's unlikely in this case, as it's a beginner situation, and we're only adding one friend anyway. It's also important not to get carried away by making multiple ad friend requests in your haste to make new connections and get started. Again, Facebook may regard such behavior as spamming, and look at suspending your account. But back to the here and now. Let's add that message. Type it in here. Hi Paul, please may I add you as a friend. And then click send. Now we can go ahead and we can click the add friend button as it will say friend request sent now I'd like to show you how it looks at the other end so I'm going to log off from this account and then immediately log back on as my own user account where the friend request has been sent and here you can see a little red icon and the number one next to the people icon. 
that indicates that a friend request has been received. So if I was to say not now, it will come back and ask me again later. I'm going to say confirm. You could at this point help Peter out and suggest some friends, but we'll not do that. We'll just skip. And now we'll log out again and log back in again as the user account. And similarly, I'll put the right password in. Third time lucky. Similarly, there's a notification here with a little globe icon saying that this, the friend request has been accepted. So if I was to say right on Paul's timeline, that would take me immediately to Paul's page and I can say hello, thanks very much. So now that we've added Paul, let's take a look at how that impacts what we see on the news feed. If you remember in the previous lesson, the news feed is where the scrolling updates happen. And we can see that Paul Wilson's latest activities is now in friends with these people most recently and there's some other posts there from Paul Wilson in the timeline quite a few and of course now if you click on Paul Wilson because you have friends you're able to see all of the posts and the people interacting on his page some of which obviously well none of which are your friends at, at this present time but because you're now friends with Paul you can see what they're posting etc. Okay we'll go back and we're going to look at those all important email notifications because Mr Wilson I have to say is a fairly prolific user and this is a classic case where we need to lock down the amount of email updates that Peter is going to receive. So where do we do that? We've been there before. The drop down arrow next to the home option, we click on that and we select account settings. Next, we look at this button here notifications. How do you get notifications? On Facebook, email, and there's some other options. So you receive all the notifications while you're logged on to Facebook, that's fair enough, or you can actually click on view there and you can turn off specific ones as you view them. Uh, email, if you click on edit, at the moment we're receiving all notifications except the ones we unsubscribe from. That means a whole raft of them. So we'll select on, only notifications about account security and privacy. So now it's set to account related notifications. In terms of close friends activity, again you can select just get them on Facebook, on Facebook and email. So we'll just say on Facebook only. So I can't emphasize enough how important this is. Leaving email notifications untouched can result in a lot of cases in people being bombarded by unmanageable levels of email traffic and in the end it puts them off using Facebook which is a real shame. Okay so in this final section we're going to look at how to interact between you and your new online friend. So I'm basically going to walk you through three ways you can interact. The first is to publicly post on their page. I click on the person and now I can type in hello Paul thanks for connecting with me. Now this won't appear on the main page necessarily, it will go to the sidebar so Paul's message will still, this large message here, will still be the first thing other users will see. I'll show you logged on as Paul shortly. The second way, as we've already demonstrated with the friend request, is to message Paul. Let's click on the message button and say Hi, again, Paul. 
I've just said hello on your wall. We click again on message. After a period of time you should be able to see a message history between you and that person. And the final way I'm going to show you is to comment on something. So if I go to Paul's message board there and comment on this particular thing, I can click the word comment. Now the difference between the messaging well, there isn't an edit button, so once you've posted a message, it's permanently there, which is something you have to be aware of. And comments is that comments can be edited afterwards. So you can click on that, and we can just say edit, amend the text, and then repost. Alternatively, I can just remove it completely. So that's a very useful option, especially. You know, if you type in something and you haven't quite got the spelling right and haven't noticed at the time, you've got the chance to revise it. Finally, the share button is very important. It means that something that's on another person's page can be shared with your own page. So if I click simply on this button, share, and it, by default it is on your own timeline. Once you become an administrator of a page, or later on you can select to post it on the pages, We'll even deal with groups in the next section. But that's all to come. Post on our own timeline and say, please support Penny Palfrey. This is a vote campaign. And click share link. We go back to our home page. You can see that entry immediately there. So Peter Wilkins via Paul Wilson, please support Penny Palfrey. And if we actually go to Peter's home page, you just see that in isolation there. As I've mentioned before, you can like an individual post. You don't generally like your own posts, but you do like other people's posts. It's a good way to encourage them to interact with you. So finally, I'll just log out now and log in as Paul Wilson again. So you can see your messages in his point of view. password correct and here Paul has a message icon which shows that he's got a new message and it's from Peter Wilkins so you can see the conversation and the times and dates or well, the time of day that it actually took place you can write a reply so Paul can't edit any of the conversation thanks for the message you can also add a file attach a file to the message if you want or add a photo and then you just click reply again there's another notification message here saying that Peter is connected on the timeline so if you look at your own timeline it does actually appear in the main box there Okay, so in the advanced topics, we're going to look at how you can create and manage Facebook pages for your organization or group. We'll cover techniques for interacting within pages at a more advanced level and look at how you can put together effective social media campaigns and grow your network in the process. But in the meantime, please continue to add more friends and go out and explore. It takes a bit of time to become familiar navigating your way around the user interface, but do take that time. Thanks very much for listening.